Hi everyone, this is Buck Rabbit. We're going to continue the Elite Chronicles with some training. So we're going to go to the training section. Go to the simulations. Now, do the, should we do the pilot? Let's do the pilot assessment. Now I've been playing Elite for quite some time, so this is merely me just reviewing what's happening in this. I see you. Federation evaluation. Most pilots assigned to me earn their license. So as long as you follow my instructions, you'll be a commander in no time. Thanks for that, man. Really appreciate oh, that. And uh, before you ask, I may sound like an imperial, but uh, I'm actually from an independent system. Really don't mind. Today we'll be covering the basics of flight control, combat, and frameshift drive use. Okay. This sidewinder has been installed with a specialized computer that'll take control at certain points. Mostly you'll follow a series of objectives to guide your actions. Okay Either then. The info panel at the top right of the head of display. That'll be okay, top right. Okay, you're good to go. Select auto launch from the options ahead of you when you're ready. Seems simple enough. The view is stunning. Do I have to... Oh, I'm waiting in queue. Okay. So we're just waiting for all of the ships to get out of the way from the slot. Ordinarily, I'd just blast straight through there. But we're, you know, we're trying to be good. You know, view. This is a truly stunning game. It really is. Agree with you there, Thoreau. Ah, here we are. Your okay, then. Task is to demonstrate basic ship movements. Okay. The ship's trajectory is primarily controlled by pitch, yaw, and roll. Perform each of these now. Seems pretty easy. So that's your side to side. Roll. I'm actually using a HOTAS, an X-52 Pro HOTAS. Those of you with the keyboard and mouse, totally different. Okay then. Your next task is to guide your ship through a series of checkpoints. Head towards the course, following the target indicator. The course weaves through an orbital structure and is designed for the novice pilot. Okay, so what we're doing, we can just follow the greens.
just take it nice and steady. Rolling and pitching together is the most efficient way of turning rapidly. Is that the next one? That is the next one. Also, the thrusters into this as well, but obviously they don't tell you that yet. Yeah, seems easy it's enough. Good practice to consider the angle and speed of your approach. See the blue marker beside the throttle gauge. Yep. This indicates the optimum turning speed. Yep, probably does. So it's basically put it in the blue. It should be good for turning. And I'm going to go this way. So you're just anticipating where you're going. Follow the arrows. It's a pretty good course, actually. Seems easy enough. Okay then. Oh, here's a slight turn. Oh yeah. And then we've got another tight turn to this hole. I did actually think how I would do on this thing. I've seen other people do it, but it seemed pretty easy. Just to get the bits in between. That's the last checkpoint. Oh. The Sidewinder is an agile craft, and you handled it well. Thanks, Theo. A new icon has appeared on the sensor display in the center of your dashboard. Oh. This represents a nearby beacon, which you'll soon scan as part of your evaluation. Okay, then. Target the beacon before we continue. You're going to use your ship's data link scanner to analyze the beacon. But you need to deploy hard points first. Really? <laughs> wow. Okay. I'm glad I've got Hotas. Good. Most external modules are installed on hard points, including weapons. Control is back with you. The beacon is relatively small, so you'll need to position yourself close to it. Watch your speed here. We intend to scan the object, not become one with it. You can scan the beacon now. And you only do is just hold the trigger down until well, it scans. The data link scanner is a versatile tool that connects with network interfaces and various data points. Cool. You need to move to another area of this star system to continue your assessment, pilot. Rather than travel for the next year using your thrusters, you can employ the ship's frame shift drive to increase your speed by a few orders of magnitude. First, ensure that the ship is correctly secured. Your landing gear, cargo scoop, and hard points <coughs> must all be retracted. When you're ready, throttle up and engage supercruise. And there we go. It's that easy. All readouts look good. You're now accelerating towards a velocity comparative to the speed of light, measured in C. Supercruise is used to navigate within a star system, well, doing it. allowing you to cover significant distances in minutes. Usually you'll retain control in Supercruise, but on this occasion your ship's computer is following a preset path. Yep, that's probably why I can't do anything. This is a good so, Yes. Let's. In the top left of your HUD is the comms panel, which displays pilot communications and contacts across several channels. Yes, it does. The top it's pretty right mad. Is your top right. panel. Entries here mostly relate to your ship's status, computer messages, and events happening around you. Okay. Seems perfectly good. Ah, there we go. Welcome to Lightspeed. Oh, 
that's 1C is light speed, is it? Oh, that's interesting. Well, do you know what? I've never actually known that. Which is quite mad, considering how long I've been playing the game. Are you going to slow down for me? Or do I have to slow myself down? Watch the distance and speed markers on the dashboard. These are used to help you accurately disengage at your destination. Okay. Usually I aim for 0 0.07. It's the number right in the middle. Let's face it, this is what many people want from Enemy Dangerous, is space combat. Because space combat is all part of this thing. Look at how pretty that is. FSD, frame shift drive. Yep, so give things a wide berth if you need to get past them. Little tip there. Okay then. Ah, can't actually move yet. Can you? Mm, that's a bit shit. Cannot comply. Oh, there we go. You have to target it first. I was a bit confused there as to what was going on. No doubt people have been confused by that many times. Okay. Well done. It's often worth scanning objects you're unfamiliar with. No, I can move. Next, you need to activate your weapons by cycling to a different fire group. Okay then. You'll notice that your weapons are now listed on your HUD. Fire groups allow you to manage your hard points sufficiently. Okay. Let's begin the combat evaluation. Destroy several of the canisters. What are these canisters? So the capacitor is the weapons column. You're not going to actually see it go down at the, at the moment because the uh, burst laser isn't nowhere near, isn't nowhere near exhausting it. <clears throat> you just see it drop one thing there. Quota achieved. Okay. Let's dial up the challenge a notch, shall we? Yes, let's. An unmanned craft has arrived nearby. These drones are used by the Pilots' Federation as target practice, and they're quite harmless. To continue, bring the craft into your sights and open fire. Take this guy out. Get closer. Engage with the multi cannon. Easy. Oh, nice safe mode. You may have noticed that multi cannons are effective against unshielded targets. Indeed. Another craft has arrived. This one is fitted with a shield generator. Helpfully, your burst laser is a thermal weapon, which excels at stripping away a target's shields. So we just boost into view of it. There it is. So now we want to get. On its six, use the burst laser to start taking it out. I don't think it shoots back. So we want to take out the shield first, and then once the shield's down, we engage with the multi cannon. And the burst laser, really doesn't matter. 
Don't worry if you don't get that first time. It can be a bit tricky. Consider me impressed. Your final target has dropped into the area. This time your opponent will fight back. No. <laughs> Okay. okay, so we've got to get him on target, select him, and then what we'll do is we'll start shooting. Start shooting, and we'll bring the multi cannon online as well. Oh, we're reloading. That can be annoying. The thermal overload is because I need to put pips into weapons, but it won't let me put whips into weapons, which is a bit unfortunate. It's alright, this guy's dead anyway. Die! And there we go. I should think so too. Well, that sounds excellent. Your evaluation involves a hyperspace jump to a neighboring star system. On this occasion, your ship's computer has selected your destination for you. We'll cover selecting destinations manually soon. The mass lock indicator on the bottom right of the dashboard is active. This means a large object is in close proximity, preventing you from engaging the FSD. To resolve this, throttle up to move a safe distance away from the mega ship. Yep, so the mega ship's actually the behind you, and the mass of it is stopping me. When you are ready to travel light years in seconds, engage the FSD. And here we go. Your first type of space jump. That's not mine. It takes a little while to charge up. Here we go. Once you're, this is essentially a loading screen. So it's, what is this doing is loading in the next system. Which is why you can't fly to other systems. Yep, maybe taking control of me again. Do anything in terms of throttle. Let's take a moment to review the interface panels either side of your chair. Okay, let's. Can't do it in Super Cruise. Oh, can you? You can. You can do little bits in Super Cruise. Once you don't have them. Many ships. In a moment, we'll be going through the docking process. This will cover docking permissions and a standard landing pad approach. 
Don't. What? You mean I've got to land this thing? Oh my god! Should be there soon. What will happen is we'll drop us out right next door to the station. And then we'll be able to dock. Don't look, that's not bad. Welcome to Quillow Station. This is the final stretch. You'll dock here shortly, but I'd like you to position your ship near the Starport's access corridor first. Starports are the backbone of humanity's operation throughout inhabited space. They provide mission boards, the commodities market, a number of specialized contacts, and various ship facilities. Most Indeed. pilot business is conducted via the Starport Services interface. I recommend familiarizing yourself with this screen when docked. Boys. Good. Ease off the throttle and hold position here. Oh, and try not to block the access corridor. Yeah, they don't like that. We'll be using the docking computer for this landing. You can always dock manually in future, of course, but practice in a training simulation first. Which is always Whichever fun. Whatever you use, all ships must seek docking permission before approaching a landing pad. To request docking permission, open your external interface panel and select the contacts tab. Then select Quello Station in the list, followed by request docking in the information panel. Docking permission authorized. Docking assist has been engaged. You've been assigned landing pad 3. The compass will point towards your designated pad. Yep. It won't let me do it myself. <laughs> Ships need to be within 7.5 kilometers of a starport for a docking request to be considered. It's important information that Theo's given us. 7.5 before requesting docking. In other words, it just say no. The computer says no. I love that they brought this back from this from the 1984 version. Yes, you used to get this in 1984 when you were docking. Once you bought you could afford a docking computer, of course. Because of the first things you bought in the Elite 1984 was a docking computer. The docking computer will now demonstrate a safe landing procedure. Let's review what it's doing. Landing gear must be deployed. The related dashboard Bottom indicator right. lights up if this has been done. Landing gear deployed. Greetings to all visitors. Please alight at your assignment. In a moment, the sensor display will switch to the precision approach display, which helps you accurately set belly down on the landing pad. And you're aiming to put the red circle in the middle of the blue. So essentially, here's the keys to your Sidewinder, away you go. And essentially that's what you got. Go back to training. I mean, there's more training simulations which we will cover in another episode. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.